Hey, it's Joy. I recently attended the Electrify Expo in Long Beach, California. I had a chance to interview Ben, who is a co-founder of an electric RV trailer startup company called Lightship that Sandy Moreau told me to go check out. So here's my conversation with Ben, and I will also show you what it looks like inside. Well, I'm here with Ben, the co-founder of Lightship, and Sandy Moreau sent me here. Are you working with Sandy? Are you guys working with Sandy? Um, we, we're not working with them yet. We yeah. actually, uh, they, they reached out to us a couple months ago, and we, so I, I had met Sandy before at um, Fully Charged in, yeah. in San Diego, a, month, a few months before that, and uh, yeah, we hit it off, and, and so then we decided to do a, a, a long, long interview here, and I, I actually convinced Sandy to get under the vehicle yesterday, so we've got a picture of Sandy. Oh, just like, that's cool. I think I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, "What is that?" Yeah, Corey posted it. It's yes. uh, yeah, oh, he's Sandy. I, I, he's a he's a man after my own heart. He really likes to get down and dirty, yes. and yes. Uh, and I do too. Yes, so. that's wonderful. So, um, what made you guys decide to start Lightship? Lightship, yeah. Okay, so the cliff notes of the story. It, uh, I, I was a battery engineer at Tesla for, for about five years. Um, I was there 2015 to 2020. My co-founder, Toby, who's not here right now, he, he was also Tesla Roots. Um, although he, he was there 2009 to 2015, and he, he led the finance team there under under Deepak, who was the CFO at the time. And, um, and he was actually the first product manager for the Model S as well, like the big, big black fish mouth and grill yes. was, was Toby's product. Um, and... So when I when I was there, I, I worked mostly on the, the Model Three battery design and that's the one I have, Model Three. Okay, me too. I love it. I hope hope it's hope it's a it's been a good car it's for you. It's still great. Yeah, coming best, out five years. Same, same. It's like best best car I've ever yes. bought by a lot. Yeah. Um. And so anyway, I was I was working on the Model Three battery, and then uh, 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 production hell ensued, and you know the whole the whole, the whole court press. Yeah. Yeah. There were tents in Fremont, and there were many, many late nights and weekends in Reno, uh, or outside of Reno, at the first Gigafactory, trying to get you know get into volume production with that 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 powertrain and that battery. Yeah. And uh, definitely cut cut my teeth there and saw saw some crazy stuff. And then finally, once you know, luckily the company survived. Model Three was in in volume production, and so then I came back to California to work at the headquarters on, on the next generation battery design. Um, this, uh, the structural battery that's now going yes. into the Cybertruck. Yes. And uh, so that was, I was kind of doing that by, by day. And uh, at the Tesla headquarters, there's this circuit of food trucks that always come through. It's like a rotating circuit of, of food trucks. And I got to know all the, all the food truckers. And the one thing that really annoyed me about these trucks is that they all run gas or propane generators to, you know, to run the operation. And it killed me because I just knew that li literally the technology to make food trucks electric was on the other side of the wall from where I was eating lunch. And so I got fed up with it. And I, I uh, took on a pet project basically to try to electrify all the food trucks in the Bay Area. And so I was still at Tesla at the time and I was working on this on the side. And then I would tell people about the food truck project and RVing always came up. In conversation because there are yeah, similar yeah, needs between the, the food trucks and, and you know run, running appliances on board an RV and so then I started to look into RVing and then COVID hit and the whole world changed and uh, we were in lockdown and after a couple of weeks of that I was like okay this, this is it this is the straw broken the camel's back and uh, so I uh, in the course of a few hours quit my job, rented an RV for three months. Uh, I took it on a 6,000 mile road trip of the West. And I was, I've always loved road tripping in the outdoors, but I, I, this was me really getting into RVing and I met a bunch of RVers on the road and I was talking to them about, um, you know, what electrification would mean for, for the RVing experience. And I just came back. Um, I'd, I'd done some research about the industry at that point too, of course. And, and, saw that um, it's not it's not global automotive but RVing is an enormous pastime especially in America it's it's uh, believe it or not by the numbers uh, one in ten American families owns an RV it's like 10% of the country is an RV owner and they have it you know either in their driveway or in storage nearby and um, I, I love I love the pastime too and saw the opportunity and so I was like okay 
I think, yes, this, this is RVing going electric is going to be a part of the next wave of, of electrification that's that's now now happening. And I want to be a part of that and I want to devote a lot of my life to it. And so I got back to, to the Bay Area and I started working on our first prototype. And then within a couple months of that, Toby and I met um, actually through our, our first investor who himself, his name is Dorian. He's a uh, kind of a, he was a Tesla lifer and he, he was the first head of the battery team there and then he led the semi-truck program for a few years as well which is obviously very relevant to what we're doing and uh, so then he put me and Toby in touch and Toby had sort of everything that, that I was lacking and the two of us uh, just had a mind meld almost right away and so then we decided to shake hands and uh, start the first American Electric RV manufacturer wow. and, and call it light shift because uh I grew up on Nantucket Island on, on the East Coast because my dad's an innkeeper there. And I would always see this boat in the harbor called the Nantucket Lightship, uh, which is, think of it like a floating lighthouse. Yeah. Um, you can look you can look it up online. Uh, it's a beautiful boat. And so I had that in my mind from my childhood. And I just liked the name. And so it, it sort of made, uh, it made me feel something. And so it's stuck. So we are, we are Lightship that's Arby. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's a great story. And... Um, so how long has uh, Lightship been yeah, around now? Uh, Just a few years, because you yeah, mentioned still, about COVID, sorry, so maybe like 2021 we started yeah, so it? Or? We, we, yeah, we're early. Um, let's see, so we, I mean, we really have been going at it hard, Toby and I both, uh, for about two years now. And, um, you know, we um, raised some money, built a team. We're, uh, believe it or not, everything, this, this vehicle that we're sitting in that we, we can go through is, um, like from scratch, from nothing to this is less than 18 months of, oh of development, goodness. which by, by automotive standards is crazy fast. Right. Um, we've done it in, in way less money than a, a typical car company would. Like th this idea of going fast and capital efficiency is really important to, to the business um, and to kind of the, to, to who we're trying to be. And okay. so now we just uh, we just launched the product that we're in the L1. This is our our flagship product. Think of it a little bit like our Roadster moment. And uh, we think it's the perfect travel trailer for the age of electrification. It is uh, it is the only trailer that you can tow for any long distance with an electric vehicle. There are of course all these these uh, electric trucks, cyber truck included, that are that are coming out. Uh, this is this is the vehicle. This is the, the RV that will tow behind those 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 trucks. Um, and for anyone who owns a, owns a you know a gas or diesel vehicle, instead of getting eight or ten miles a gallon, you're back up to your normal fuel economy of twenty to twenty five. Um, and so we've uh, we, we we launched at at South by Southwest it was about two months ago, and we opened up a pre order bank because we wanted to make sure that uh, what we built is truly what what people want. And the answer I think has been a resounding yes. Yes, uh, definitely, they, definitely. They love it, and we do too. And so now we're. Uh, we're we're on the path to production. We're uh, we're working on the production tent design right now, and the goal is that we will start production at the very end of next year, and then the, the production ramp will happen throughout twenty twenty five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is this solar powered? Uh, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, of course you can't see it from the inside, but um, you you can see it on the website. It's, uh, it's just light, lightshiprv dot com. Uh, there's there's some good images of of the overhead of the of the sure. vehicle. Um, the whole fixed portion of the roof, every, everything behind the headliner on, on, on the top of the roof yeah. is integrated solar. So um, you, you've got to make sure that the solar is a part, it follows the body line so that you can keep the aerodynamics good, good enough. Um, on that fixed portion of the roof, we fit about two kilowatts of solar. And then we also have an awning that will extend out for shade, but also for additional solar. Uh, and so with the awning, you get up to about three kilowatts of solar. And to, to put that in context, um, a typical American home may have four to five kilowatts on the roof. So this is almost a residential sized solar system. And you also, you know, we have, we have, we have an EV battery in the floor. It's, it's sort of a Model 3 sized battery. So think it's about 80, 80 usable kilowatt hours, uh, which in uh, in terms of a Tesla Powerwall is like five or six Tesla Powerwalls. So what, one thing we realized as we, were, as we started to develop the product was that, okay, uh, this RV for most people is going to sit in your driveway for 48 or 49 weeks out of the year. And if it's just generating energy and you have an enormous battery pack on the floor, well, effectively, this is your home solar system. And so think about charging your EVs either at home or on the road. 
doing backup power for your house. So when the grid goes down, you can still run your house off of your light chip and your light chip is being charged by the sun. All, all of that sort of stuff is is um, is baked into the product. Okay. Um, is there a way to just plug this in and charge some at an RV park? Yeah. Or oh yeah, of course. Okay. This, actually, this is kind of a beautiful thing about about RVing is that um, you know Tesla has an advantage with something like the supercharger network, but uh, charging infrastructure is a real impediment to the to the growth of electrification in the U.S. And we have a little bit of a hack with RVs in the sense that. Uh, you could put it as destination charging is basically baked in to the RVing experience because a lot of RV campgrounds already have 240 volt, yeah, high, high voltage, high power hookups, and those because they put them in there for big motor coaches and things like that. So you can run, you could run a big RV. You can use that same power that exists at an RV campground to charge your light chip overnight. So you can it, you could level two charge it and get a full charge throughout the night. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's love. great. So, do you potentially see this being utilized by food trucks as well? <laughs> um, that's how you got inspired. Uh, you know, Joy, I'd be lying to you to say that it's not a dream of mine, <laughs> in particular, <laughs> given given my history. Um, and and I've, I've I think I've I've suckered my girlfriend into into the, that dream too. We uh, we really want to go out, maybe. Maybe the next time the World Cup comes back to, to North America and we want to do a road trip across the West, tailgate all the games, and then you can see because of the windows, uh, it's, it's, it's in, in some ways it acts a little bit like a food truck, so I could be passing food That's back right. and forth to, to this guy, yep. for instance, and so we want to set up little pop-up restaurants as we go and maybe put it on Instagram and things like that. Uh, that's that's my personal project because food trucks are still a little bit of a pet yeah. project. Uh, no plans to uh, to scale big into the food okay. truck industry right now. We're, we're all about traveling. Have together. you ever watched a movie called The Chef? Uh, yes, I have. Or, or I should say, I've seen about half of it. I need to see the second half. Yes, because... Uh, um, very relevant. Yeah, super relevant. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in terms of the, the design of, um, of, of this trailer, where you're sitting at, is this like a pull-out bed? Yeah, exactly. So this, this is, um, this is it's a lounge area by day, yeah. Yeah. but um, it also converts out into a queen-sized bed. Queen-sized so, bed, yeah. Nice. So th this would be your main bedding space. Yeah. And then this, uh, of course, this is the dinette. Most right. of the time, but you can actually um, you can bring this table down. I'll see here. Let me. I can yeah, show you it's this. okay. You don't. You don't have to. Yeah, just you can just walk me through it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, here I'll I'll show you this. Okay. Hey, do you mind if I bring the table down really quickly? Just don't want to squeeze your yeah, leg. So this is this is like a reproduction. So yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I, I see the I see the I see, whole the whole yeah. table. So so this is actually portable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So this where it's most of the time it's your dining your dining setup. Um, if you know if maybe you were a small family and you had a, a couple of kids, yep. this becomes a, a full size bed as well. So this so becomes, the kids it's, can it's a sleeping surface. Perfect. Yeah. Um, now, okay, on this side, this is all of this is a lot of your storage area. So this yep. is a big storage console along the whole passenger side of the vehicle. Um, you can see, you know, we, we're just putting snacks and yep. stuff like that in yep. here. But this, this would probably be where you do a lot of clothing storage, right? Um, so you have a few, a few of those compartments. Um, kitchen yeah, area. and I, I walk through them. I, I walk. You got through. Yeah, yeah, right? okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, this is there. a great concept. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And um, thank one, although one one yeah, thing that's ahead. beautiful about it is that we um, we didn't want to launch with vaporware, and we didn't want to have just a sort of a, a show car that can't do anything. So yeah. this this is a true alpha vehicle, and that means that it has a functional powertrain. We actually put a we put a motor on board this trailer so they can help propel itself. This yeah. is how the tow vehicle loses no range; okay. is that the trailer is helping itself for 300 miles, so the truck that's pulling it feels almost nothing. Um, we built all of that into the, the floor of this this vehicle. True working interior, working solar system, the exterior is well finished. It, we, um, we meant this to be the first, not yet durable, but true look at what the L1 and what a light chip is. Okay, yeah. wonderful. And if people want to get more information yeah. about this, where do they go? Uh, start with the website. You can come to us too. We're you know we're a small company. You can reach any of us. But um, 
go to the website. It's www.lightshiprv.com. Um, that's where we, we set up our reservation system as well. It's a $500 refundable deposit okay. to you know basically get, get your spot in line for a production sure. slot for the for the L1 and. Yeah, we have a ton of ton of fun fun details about about what what the L one is on, on the website too. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ben, for uh, for your time. Thanks, Rich. And best of luck. Appreciate it. Thank you all. This electric RV trailer is pretty cool, right? I am just so happy to see that the electrification movement is spreading to other types of vehicles like RVs or recreation vehicles. Thank you so much for coming along on this tour with me. I will see you in the next one and God bless you.